In today's video, we're going to be learning about timeline views in SwiftUI. Before we jump into things, start by dropping a like down below, hit subscribe if you're new here, let's open up Xcode and dig in. We're going to stick with the app template under iOS and give this project a creative name of timeline view example. Make sure you stick with SwiftUI and Swift as your language. I'll toss it onto my desktop before we jump into things and we'll also collapse this right panel make everything a smidge bigger so we can work with it, hit resume in our preview and dive into timeline views. So first and foremost, what on earth is a timeline view and why should you care about it and why am I making a video about it? So traditionally, SwiftUI views are reactive per data. Now, what does that mean? That means that you usually have things like observable objects with published properties or you might have states and bindings that are changing and your body property of your SwiftUI view basically recomputes as that data changes. That's the reactive way it works and that's pretty common for a lot of reactive patterns. Now, timeline views makes things a little more interesting. Timeline views, as the name suggests, allows you to have a view that updates on a cadence, a particular timeline, and you can use it for things like animations and other pretty cool effects. And it kind of breaks the model with just using a data binding to change your UI. So let's do some practical examples and talk about why you would actually use it. So I'm going to create a vertical stack here with some padding and inside of it, I'll toss a timeline view. It takes one argument. The first one we're going to work with is animation and its view builder takes a argument of context. Now your context object will provide a date, which is important to actually calculate your cadence and duration of how your timeline view will actually update itself. So what I'll start by doing in here is create a circle. We'll give it a stroke with a color and a line width. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna animate this. So we'll say line width is 10. Now to animate it, what I wanna do is we wanna calculate the second for the current date. So, you know, if this is, uh, you know, 2 p.m. at 31 minutes, we wanna know the second component. So I'm gonna say second is going to be calendar current and we want to get the second component from the date and now that we've got this we can actually pass it into the trim modifier saying trim from zero we'll cast the second into a double and we're going to say divided by 60.0 since there are 60 seconds in a minute if i go ahead and hit the live preview option on the right you'll now see that this uh, circle border the stroke is actually updating second by second and filling in per the current uh, second component of the date now our view is not updating because of any state or binding change it's updating strictly because this timeline view we've said is of the animation flavor and we want to update the circle the trim modifier in particular by the second and this is going to update continuously with our circle changing per whatever the current second component is. So now you can quickly start to see that you can take this concept of a timeline view and apply it to some pretty amazing animations. Think about, you know, your background color changing as the time of day changes if you have you know, your app open all day for some odd reason, or you can even pause these animations, which we'll look at in a second. Now, before we look at pausing animations and things like that, let's talk about the other common uh, flavor of a timeline view, and that is periodic from a particular date with an interval. So I can say I want to update, or I want the timeline view to update itself from now every three seconds. So we'll leave the circle code as is, and what you'll start to notice now is that the updates are less frequent, but with larger chunks. It's a little tough to visualize it with the circle, so what I'll actually do here is I will toss it in a label, and I'll just say here second, and we'll add a line break and say seconds here, like so. And now what you'll see on the right is that the number is going up every three seconds. This is because we've explicitly told our timeline view to update periodically with a cadence of three seconds starting now, where now is the time that this view is actually created. So that's basically a quick summary of a timeline view. It's really simple to use, but pretty amazing if you wanna build out some pretty sweet animations and other effects. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention there are other flavors in here like every minute and the other one that I was talking about which is a animation with a minimum interval as well as the most important thing here being the paused 
argument. You can pass in a binding and state in here. Presumably, you can attach it to something like a button and control this timeline view even more granularly. So that's basically it. I know I haven't posted a video in quite a while. I've been trying to get back onto my posting schedule. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like down below before clicking away. Let me know in the comments if you've used the timeline view, if you have any video suggestions, what you guys want to see. Of course, subscribe if you're new here and into iOS. Tweet out the video. Connect on all the socials. You guys know the drill. Thanks again for watching. I will see you on the next one.